Hey everybody, in today's video I'm going to reveal a long forgotten secret. One time, I was a nerd. And then, I'm going to show you how to make this pinhole camera. We're going to spray paint, it's going to be great. Hi everybody, so this is a stereoscopic pinhole camera. It has two pinholes, it uses a single sheet of about 8 by 10 paper. Uh, I actually have to trim a little bit off to make it fit. This box is a little bit small, but that's okay. And um, it takes two images on the paper, and it's pretty good for some trick and interesting photography. Uh, a, so at the end of this video, I'm going to show you some samples that I've taken with this actual camera that I, I made here. But first, I'm going to show you how to make it. So I had to make a pinhole photograph, uh, pinhole camera for the photo course I'm taking, and it's been a lot of fun to take a photo course again. So I was going to throw this box out, because I don't need it anymore, I don't, haven't used it in years, I found it in the back of a closet. But I thought, wait a second, I've got to make that camera tonight, let's use this. So what I did was, I just cut two larger holes into the bottom of it. Well, I spray painted the whole thing black first, both sides. You have to spray paint it black to get the... Um, optimum light absorption, otherwise any light that isn't instantly absorbed by the paper will bounce back, pick up whatever coloration is in the, um, the paper, or the, the cardboard, if there is a, if it's color film that's a problem, if not, it's, what happens is it just bounces off the cardboard and then it'll fog your film. <coughs> so to prevent it from fogging your film, you, you paint the inside black and then it absorbs the maximum amount of errant light and gives you uh, slightly sharper images, well substantially sharper images actually. If you're using a cardboard box it's not as big a deal as if you're using a metal box where light reflects easily or a metal can or something like that. As in some of my other videos which show uh, pinholes being made with metal cans, not painting those would be a catastrophe. So this one's a pretty simple build. After you paint it black you cut some larger holes in here and then you put uh, a couple of pinholes in. The pinholes are just simply taped in with electrician's tape, and then the shutters are an electrician's tape flap with a piece of, a small, small piece of 120 backing paper with the black side taped to face the pinhole, and then it just goes in place like that. And to take the picture, you just pull the shutter back and hold it, uh, if possible, or set the camera like that so the gravity holds the shutter in place for you. And uh, then the exposure time in bright sun for photo paper, for a piece of photo paper, is about 15 seconds. Uh, I've been doing 12 second exposures with this in full sun and it's actually been working very well. Uh, my pinholes are slightly larger than normal. So in that range you'll want to experiment. If you have 8x10 sheet film you can use that as well. Uh, or if you wanted to use um, some other type of media, 5x7 film or sheet film can work. This really works very well for 8x10. And fortunately, I have a sheet of 8x10 photo paper right here. So the way to load this, remember you have to, anytime you have photo paper out of the box, it has to be in a red light, in a safe light environment. So this paper that I have here is ruined. Uh, it's not ever going to work for an image because it's been exposed to standard light. So it goes in like this and then the top of the box goes on like that. Now as you can see it's a little bit long. So if you have a paper cutter, a paper cutter works the best for this, but if you don't, scissors will be okay too. So I'm going to cut a little bit of an edge off. That's probably about uh, half of an inch that it's too long. So now let's try loading it again. Okay, so I've got the width correct. The width this way, that's fine. There, oh, oh, it's too, it's bringing itself back up. Now there's two things you can do. You can either leave it like this, or assuming that your box is the same size, you can leave it like this and then just tape the side so it doesn't move. Or if it's springing up, it's a little bit too long, you can also cut it this way, which I've done. Uh, and you want to take about uh, about three quarters of an inch off of one side, and then it'll nest pretty nicely. There we go. So what I do with my box that fits on like this, after I have a piece of photo paper in and it's ready to take a picture, 
I've run a bead of tape around the edge, that's why it's lost a lot of its paint here, or printing, whatever it is. Um, because I've used it a number of times, and each time I take up the paint, some of the printing comes with it. But by putting a piece of tape on, I can't lift it up accidentally and ruin my photo or my photo paper, and that works as a signal to me that it's got paper in it. The other thing it does is give this a nice tight fit all the way around to prevent light from creeping in around the edges and the corners and fogging your paper. So that's a must do for that. So that's the stereoscopic pinhole camera. So stick around for a few seconds and you'll get to see some photos that I've taken with this actual camera. And if this video was helpful, give me a thumbs up. Oh, the pinholes for this, by the way, are just pop can with pin holes in them. I didn't go to any uh, great length to, uh, to make special or high-end pinholes. But um, if, this video, if this video was helpful, give me a thumbs up. That lets me know I'm on the right track. You can subscribe to my channel and you can find out when I have more uh, photography videos that I release. Also, uh, please leave a comment or question below. I'm pretty good about responding to them fairly quickly. And if you have any suggestions for future videos, you can leave those in the comments or shoot me an email. I'm more than happy if I have the technical capability and equipment to film those videos for you. And one last thing, thank you guys for watching.